Now, this is the brand new MacBook Pro 16 with M2 Max. It's one of the more expensive SKUs you can buy with 64 gigabytes of RAM. It has a 12 core CPU and the 38 core GPU. The only difference between this and the most expensive model is more storage or getting it with 96 gigabytes of memory. But this laptop, I was just expecting a year over year update, but I was not expecting that this laptop would perform just as well or sometimes even better than a completely maxed out 120 gigabytes of RAM M1 Ultra Mac Studio. Now, before I get to the performance, and trust me, you're gonna to wanna to hear this, we gotta talk about quality of life updates because there's a few that go along with this new model. For one, it's still the same weight as the previous MacBook Pro 16, so there's no difference there. The port lineup is identical, so you're still getting the same feature set. The big difference, though, is that this power connector has a new braided cable, the same braided cable that you'd find on a MacBook Air M2. It feels better, it looks better, it's just a nicer cable. The other thing is the Type-C ports are no longer Thunderbolt 3, but have been upgraded to Thunderbolt 4. But the most important thing, the one that mattered to me the most, is that the HDMI port is now 2.1. I'm someone who uses a TV as a monitor, the LG C2 OLED. And that TV does not have a display port. And it doesn't matter if you use a Type-C adapter, utilizing HDMI, it will not work. There is no display port. It won't get 120 Hertz with the older MacBooks or the Mac Studio. This new MacBook with an HDMI 2.1 port, I can connect it via HDMI and get a full 120 Hertz. If you have another display that has a higher refresh rate, this laptop is going to support it as well. The beauty about it, because there is three Type-C ports and an HDMI port, you can hook up to four displays at the same time, so you'll have tons of screen real estate to utilize. Besides that, on the right-hand side, you have the HDMI port, the other Type-C port, and of course, that full SD card slot. You also get Wi-Fi 6E, so faster Wi-Fi to utilize, and Bluetooth has been improved from 5.0 to 5.3. But everything else, in terms of the way the keyboard feels to type on and the size of the touchpad, is identical to the previous MacBook Pro 16. The speakers are still top-notch, they're the best in the business. I don't know another laptop that gets sound quality this good. And the webcam is still 1080p, but the notch, for some of you, which I know is a major complaint, is still there. One thing I do love about this mini LED display is how bright it can get. It's the same as before, I'm not seeing an improvement. It's still very color accurate and one of the best displays you can get on a laptop right now. Now performance is where things get really interesting. And I do a lot of synthetic benchmarks because it's a good way of seeing year over year improvements generally. But as I tell you guys in every video, it never tells the true story. Real world workloads matter way more. And yes, this has faster single core clock speeds than any other M1 product on the market, as it should. The clock speed can hit higher. Multi-core clock speeds are a totally different story. We're talking about a 12 core CPU compared to 20 on the Mac Studio. And I know I compare it to the Mac Studio a lot. I don't have an M1 Max here in the studio, but I was just shocked how well this performs compared to a desktop computer. In fact, if you're a video creator, regardless of whether you're using Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut or even DaVinci Resolve, this M2 Max MacBook Pro 16 performed better in most situations. Like they were just neck and neck all the time with the MacBook Pro 16 edging out the Mac Studio, which is insane to me. On top of that, if you're a 3D developer or a 3D artist rather, this is also faster than the Mac Studio. And that's kind of weird. Like why is a 38 core GPU losing out to a 64 core GPU? I obviously don't have the perfect answer, but based on my gut, it means the M1 Ultra is probably not utilizing those GPU cores as well. Either this is a software issue or the cache and buffer on the GPU portion of the chip is not big enough to saturate the GPU cores efficiently. And with the M2 Max, they added more cache, a bigger buffer, so that it's done properly. But if you're a developer or someone who's using nothing but the CPU, the performance difference between the Mac Studio and M2 Max is obviously a lot more noticeable. Now I know a lot of you are probably saying, Matt, then what's the point of buying a Mac Studio? Well, honestly, probably not a lot right now if we're talking strictly performance, because this MacBook Pro 16 is performing just as well, and you're saving like 2,000 Canadian dollars. Now, if I was you, I'd either just buy a MacBook Pro 16 with an M2 Max, or I'd wait for a Mac Studio that has the M2 Ultra, because they're gonna do a much better job of 
saturating those GPU cores and giving you much better performance than what the M1 Ultra could do before. Now, battery life on this is still fantastic. Some of the best battery life I've ever experienced in a laptop. I don't have an exact number because there's no specific tests that are very worthy to show you, like Wi-Fi tests that these companies show are absolutely ridiculous. It's not real life, but based on my personal use, I had zero issues editing video, browsing the net with tons of tabs open, watching content, sending out emails, and still having battery at the end of the day. I'm talking about a 12 hour use case. So the battery life is impeccable. I will say though that the SSD speeds are faster on this MacBook Pro 16 than the Mac Studio. Not by a lot, but it's something to point out. But the fan on this guy did go on a bit quicker than the previous MacBook Pro 16 I reviewed with M1. And it wasn't loud, like I could hear it. In fact, I had a PC laptop beside me and every time I would do a performance test on the Asus G15, the fan was just going crazy. Like it was over 50 decibels. It was ridiculous. This guy over here was just quiet the entire time. And what really continues to impress me is the fact that when this thing is not connected to the wall, you get very similar performance. I'm not gonna say exact performance because the M2 Max has an option to put it on a high power mode, which like pushes out a tiny bit more performance if you don't mind a tiny bit more heat and having the fan come on a bit earlier. Now granted, if you're a gamer, you're not buying a Mac. Like this GPU inside of here is not even powerful as an RTX 3060 when it comes to gaming specifically. But if you're a video creator, if you're someone who's doing music or you're a developer, this is like the best laptop to have. I would also like to add, if you currently have a MacBook Pro 14 or 16 with M1 Max or M1 Pro, do not get jealous. There's nothing to get jealous about. The design is pretty much the same. Performance is better, but it's not significantly better where I feel like you need to go out and upgrade. Your computer is great. Feel great about your purchase. Enjoy it for the next few years until you actually need an upgrade. But I will say though, if you're looking at a Mac Studio, I would take a hard look at the MacBook Pro 16 with M2 Max instead because you're gonna save yourself a lot of money and get very similar performance. I hope this review was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.